Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to get started with Amazon and its EC2 instances. So we will see how to start an instance from scratch, from creating the instance to launching it and then connecting via SSH using VS code. After that, we'll install a Next.js application and start the Hello page. The guide is quite basic, so it's suitable for beginners. No specific uh, background knowledge is required and of course you'll need an active AWS account and also VS code installed in your PC. So let's start with the activation of the instance. Then we access your AWS through the VS code. We access directly the instance. Important note, we always log with an EAM user profile, not the root. And this is because it's not recommended to log directly from the root for security reason. And of course, the root administration profile has the complete authorization privileges over the entire account Root uh, should only be limited to uh, administrative operation. So we log into our uh, AIM profile with permission for operation only for, in this case, for EC2, then access the EC2 directly. We are in the uh, AWS account, search EC2 in the bar, so we can find the EC2. Here's the dashboard. This is the, the list of my EC2 instances. We launch a new instance, so we go directly. We push the button, we give the name of the instance. The name can be next.js underscore tutorial is okay. And after that, we choose the Linux distribution and you can find many system. And I will always choose Amazon Linux for various reasons. First of all, this Linux version is optimized for AWS. It means that there is a team that always optimize this distribution and release a new version. Uh, it's an excellent choice for hosting web application in EC2 and mainly due to its stability and uh, continuous optimization. Yeah. So it's regularly updated by AWS team. So I recommend using it uh, in the cloud environment. Alternatively, you can choose many other type of Linux based instances such as Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, and uh, many others. Yeah. Or you can also upload your own version. So we choose Amazon Linux. The last distribution is the 2023. The architecture is 64-bit, uh, it's okay. The instance type here, essentially, we can open a door on a parallel universe, uh, which is the world of instances. In EC2 offers a vast array of instances to meet your specific needs. Uh, this range uh, include many kinds of instances, for, for example, for machine learning uh, with a high-performance GP for graphics rendering, uh, the other kind of instances for special RAM requests, storage systems, and more. The T3 family provides uh, fairly standard instances for common application. And so we will choose T3 micro that uh, actually is free. It is, is in the free tier. We will generate a key pair. If we don't have, we can generate one. I already have many key pair. I can choose uh, this one, XJ, the Vergo tutorial. It actually is the same. Oh, it's not the same, but I will use this one. And we go and we create a new security group. In my case, I will use an existing security group. That is, I can choose this one. Later, we will see how to set it. The storage is okay for gigabytes. And there we go. We set everything so we can launch the instance. We wait. So it's really fast. In a few seconds, we have our instance ready. We go to the instance and we can see the new instance that is already running and is initializing. If we click on the instance, we can see many information. We can see that this is the public IP address. So we can access directly the instance through the ZP. This is the DNS. We can use that for this. I mean, in the West code for SSH connection. And then we have many other information. We don't go in deep in the EC2 instances because it's a really extended topic. Uh, maybe we can see in later in other tutorials. We just check the information that we need for the connection. So the instance type is 3 micro. Uh, this is the VPC, all the details. And this is the security group. So I already use this security group. Let's see uh, in detail all the security group settings. So we can edit the inbound rules. And the, the important is the SSH for connecting. So I just authorize only my IP in this case. So you can choose my IP or 
any P that you want. And uh, I also keep the 3000 port to connect Next.js localhost. This is important to allow Next.js to connect in the dev mode. We can allow every P and we save the rules. So I wrote actually already saved. I didn't make any changes. So after that, we can go into our VS code. First of all, we are going to set a new SSH connection before, before the connection, please add the extensions, a uh, remote SSH that this uh, will allow you to connect directly to external server and also remote SSH editing configuration. We go to the list of our SSH. We wait this loading. Okay, here we go. It's all the connection already set. We go to config and this is the list of the server connection. We can add the new one. So we copy block. The, the most important information is this for, so host name, identity file and user. Of course, we can add many other attributes, but in this case, we only need these three. So the host is going to be the name of our instance. The name of our instance we just create now is Next.js the Virgo tutorial. Sorry, it's not this one. This is terminated. It's Next.js tutorial. We set here. We can we put the name of the instance. We also need the, the DNS of the instance. That is this link. We copy it and we paste here. Before connecting, we have to set also the the pointer of the folder where we put the the PAM file with the key pair. The file we already download before and here we go is this one. We can put directly in the SSH folder in our Windows or if we use a Linux, we can also send Linux folder here in, in Windows is here user SSH and we copy here. So this is our key pair that we need for the connection. So we change the name here. Okay. After that, we save it and we upload with the updates already the, the new connection. So you just wait some seconds and automatically you will get it here. We just wait. Here we go. We see the new connection to our Next.js tutorial instance. So we go to connect in the new window. We just wait a few seconds and uh, yeah, it's connected. Continue. We will confirm. And uh, here we go. We are connected with the instance. So here we can see all the folders that actually we are in the EC2 user folder that is from the home folder in Linux. So now it's time to install Next.js. Before installing Next.js, we need to provide uh, Node.js uh, and install Node.js in Linux because it's re required from Next.js. First of all, we check if we have Node.js. We don't have, so command not found. We want to install the latest version of Node.js. We can go to this link that actually is on GitHub. It's github.com. Node source distribution, Amazon Linux version. We want to install the latest that now is the 20, version 20. We copy the script, this, this bash script directly in our terminal. And there we go. We wait that Linux install Node.js. We wait. That's great. So now we can check Node version just to be sure that everything is done correctly. Also NPL, perfect. We have the version 10.1.0. So next we can see also Linux added the folder NPM, the Node Package Manager. And now it's time to install the Next.js. So the next, maybe we can also, before installing Next.js, we can also update the Linux packages. So we can just sudo yum update. Nothing to do anyway. We can. It's always a good. It's a good habitude to update all the package to the last version. At this point, we can install Next.js. So we teach it npx create next app latest, and here we go. We install it. Okay. So now we have some questions. We we'll create. We proceed. It's okay. So we give the name of our folder. We can call the Virgo. We want to use TypeScript, yeah. I prefer TypeScript because it's actually Next.js is native. In this case, we select yes. Uh, as lint yes, tailwind CSS. Uh, if you 
use this framework is it's really good actually if you want to use bootstrap or other css framework we can also don't install tailwind i like it tailwind so i install source directory we don't need because we want all the folder to be created directly in the upper level of the app root so the app router is the latest paradigm introduced by next.js that replaced the holder one the pages router so we can confirm we don't need any import alias this is the prefix that uh, will be applied automatically to hold the import in every file so we don't need actually any prefix so we put no and we wait that all the package will be installed we wait for the installation it's okay okay so next.js is installed we have the new project folder the Virgo as we specify in the process so inside the Virgo we have many files uh, we have some folder the folder hub with where we can put all the routing uh, logics the node models with all the model that Next.js use we can also install more later for our application public for all the static stuff and everything like a JSON and uh, here we go Next.js is installed so we want to launch the script because in this tutorial, the last step is to launch our first hello page. Actually, it's the Next.js default page. We can use Next.dev. We also have other script that we will see later in the tutorial. If dev will launch our next environment for development purpose. And uh, that's what we're going to do now. But first, we have to go in the folder, in, a, in our project folder, cd the Virgo. And after we start, we and run dev. So it will start our page on localhost. Here we go, localhost. Uh, this is the default page of Next.js. And here is the page. We wait. It's loading. Here we go, Next.js page. We have reached the end of this video tutorial, and I genuinely hope you have enjoyed its content. If it has been helpful to you, please show your support by liking the video and sharing it with your friends on social media. If you haven't already, I warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on upcoming lessons. Don't forget to check out my website, thevergolabs.com, where you will find a plethora of interesting programming content. You can also send me collaboration requests and explore all the programming services we offer. Your participation and support are crucial in my growing and to grow this community and providing you with even more valuable resources. Thank you for the bottom of my heart for being here with us and I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial.